disclaimer is not my story time. My best friend and I have known each other for about three years. Now there has always been jealousy between us. We're very competitive because we're both models and we're always trying to one up each other with the jobs we get. Luckily, we both do pretty well. We both modeled for Kylie Cosmetics. When it comes to men, we both tend to go for the same type of guy. And yes, he's always a little bit toxic. Well, this time around, my bestie decided to start dating a regular guy. He works at an office and he's not toxic at all. In fact, he's got money, stability, doesn't have any mental health issues. Obviously, seeing the fact that she got with somebody who was healthy made me feel like I wasn't doing enough. And after meeting this guy, I realized just how good he is. He's also pretty attractive. I knew that their relationship would not be good for me. I became extremely envious. I was angry at her all the time. That's when I started making up lies about him to my best friend. I told her that he would stare at me a lot and that it made me uncomfortable. Part two is up. Disclaimer is not my story time. That's when I started making up straight up lies about him. I told my best friend that he would stare at me and that it made me uncomfortable. And when I told her this, she went crazy on him. She actually confronted him in front of me. Trust me, I wasn't expecting her to do that, but he went out of his way to apologize to me and told me that he didn't mean to make me uncomfortable. And he said that if he even stared at me, it was probably a mistake. Y'all, I know he didn't stare at me. I was lying, but he still apologized to me. This is when I realized just how good a guy he is. And this made me want him even more. I was angrier and more jealous than ever. My envy levels were through the roof. Every time they went out on a date, I would try to sabotage it somehow. I'd go over to her house to help her get ready and randomly start doing her makeup and force her to be late. One time I even pretended to drop a glass of water and I wet her hair just so that she would be late to the date. And it started working. They began fighting and she would tell him that he had no patience with her and he started calling her flaky. This is when I had to go to Instagram. I made an account and pretended to be another girl. I started messaging him, but he wasn't replying. What I did next is bad. Part three is up. And that's when I slid into my bestie's boyfriend's DMs pretending I was somebody else. Disclaimers are not my story time. I spent two weeks creating this fake account. I found a random Brazilian model online. And I basically stole all her Instagram pictures. I went ahead and made the account and started posting every single day, multiple times a day. And I even started posting on the stories, like stealing her pictures and pretending it was uploaded from that day. I was really good at it. I started messaging him, but nothing. Eventually I replied to one of his stories and he did end up seeing that one, but he didn't reply. So I knew I had to take it a step further. I know that he's in financing. So I reached out to him with a question about finance. This is when he replied. He offered to give me a free consultation online. Instead of saying, yes to that right away, I started asking him questions and he was answering. But eventually I asked him what city he was living in and if he wanted to hang out. This is when he politely said that he would go out with me, but that he has a girlfriend and that nothing could happen. I told him I was new in town and that I needed friends. He sent me a list of restaurants that I could go to. I mean, how nice is he? But still he kept it really professional. So I took all of the evidence and I went to my best friend. She hit the roof. She completely believed everything I said. It only took me two hours to convince her to leave him. Part four is once I convinced my best friend to break up with her boyfriend because I wanted him, everything was easy. I showed her the Instagram DMs which weren't really that bad, but she still got really mad at him. She even thanked me for going out of my way to prove that he was a lying cheater. According to her, the fact that he even would message his girl back shows that he had an intention to speak to her, even though he didn't actually agree to hang out with her. And I have to agree with that. She ended up breaking up with him that very same day. Then he messaged me asking if I could try to help him get back with her. Of course I said no, but now my goal is to try to get with him. I feel like this is gonna be really hard because he's such a good guy. And also I need to keep it secret from my best friend. But I want a man like this, someone loyal and kind. I actually ended up telling my mom about my plan and she tells me not to do it. What should I do? Here's a story time of the worst experience I ever had working at the worst job I ever worked. The gym I worked at in particular though closed on the weekends at nine o'clock, right? So get out, get out, get out at nine o'clock, you know? No, people really thought that that meant like get ready to shower at nine o'clock, like start getting ready. No, get out of the gym, please. Anywho, we have this lady which we called Naked Mary. And if you were wondering why we called her Naked Mary, I'm about to tell you that. Every time you walked in the locker room, she was naked. I'm talking badonk donk naked. And that's no shame to her. Like, do your thing, babe. But when we're giving tours of the gym and telling people they should join and we just like walk in the locker room and there's a lady butt naked, it's like, all right, well, we have her here too. One night I was working on a Friday, right? And it was close. It was nine o'clock. So I was like, Mary, it's time to go. And I hear her in the locker room being like, I'm about to shower. Like, Mary, why do you always have an attitude? Mary, like, keep it to yourself. So I let her, I let her shower. I'm like, okay, you got like 15 minutes, Mary. I'll let you shower, but please stop doing this. You know, you're already banned from two locations. Like, please stop doing this here. I have somewhere to be. She literally after 30 minutes is still in there. And I'm like, Mary, I'm about to turn the lights off. And she's like, no. I'm like, Mary, my manager is asking me why I'm still here because I should have been gone an hour ago. Like, I'm going to turn the lights off. Mind you, this lady at a different location had gotten left in the gym after close, after dark, while all the doors were locked and no one was there. Because she would just be in the locker room not telling anyone she was there and hiding so that we wouldn't tell her to leave. Like, what? All right, so finally I'm over it. I turn off the lights and I hear her screaming bloody murder like someone had just taken her cat and fried it up. Really screams out to me, 
I'm naked, turn the lights back on. I'm like, Mary, you should not still be naked. Like it has been an hour. At this point, she's telling me to turn the lights back on so she can find her clothes. So I tell her, you got two seconds of turning the lights back on. So I turn them back on and then I turn them back off. Did you find your clothes? Okay. She runs out of the locker room up to me at the front desk, butt naked. And she starts screaming at me and I'm like looking at her and I go, what are you doing? Why are you butt naked out here? She's like cursing me out and then finally starts trying to come behind the counter like she's about to try to like get with me. I'm like, Mary, I'm calling the police. And she's like, <gasps> and runs out to her car, butt naked drives away. Obviously in this situation, I ban her from the gym. But at the gym I work at, it's all franchises. So like bans in one part of the franchise doesn't equal a ban in a different franchise. So she goes to the different franchise. To this day, she's still naked, Mary. She still goes around traumatizing gym employees. Literally hear about it still to this day from people that work at gyms that I used to work at. She's really learned how to finesse the system. I don't know how she's allowed in any gyms or like in public. Okay, get ready with me while I tell you a funny story from grade nine that I just thought of. Okay, so my stepsister and I are the same age. So this was in grade nine and we used to do this thing called Wild Wednesday. I could not tell you why we named it that, but basically, we would just stay up super late and we stole our parents alcohol it's her mom and my dad that are together and they're both pretty strict so i guess we wanted to rebel in some way okay to start off we weren't allowed snapchat until grade 12 but we ended up getting it earlier because we you know did anyway but we had it in grade 9 and we hit it like we log out of our phone and delete the app every time we weren't on it we also weren't allowed our phones in our room overnight until grade 12, so we had our phones downstairs and we'd have to put it there at a certain time every night. We also share a room, so we would wait up until both of our parents went to bed, and then we would sneak down and steal our phones, simply because we wanted to Snapchat boys and be like, oh my god, we're drinking on a Wednesday night, and like, we're gonna be so hungover. So that's what we did. We literally went downstairs. We snuck downstairs. Um, one of us, we have a dog, a black lab. So one of us would hold our dog so that he wouldn't go crazy as if someone's breaking in. I'm pretty sure I was the one that held our dog. And then she stole a bottle of gin from their cabinet and poured it into glasses. But obviously we don't know anything about alcohol. So we have a pretty large glass and she pretty much filled like three quarters of the glass with gin and we're like yeah that should be good so yeah then we run up back to our room and we start drinking it but i literally i'm like i can't like this tastes like literal nail polish remover i just wasted it down the drain and you know it's probably expensive the worst part is that we were like okay well we can just pretend to be drunk so we were like snapchatting these boys we're trying to be like drunk out of our minds then the next day when we went to school, she pretended to be hungover with like a hoodie on, being like, mm, yeah, I'm so hungover. And I was like, I don't get hungover. That's what I said to everyone, which I actually don't, but how would I know? I didn't even drink any alcohol. Yeah, I think that's the reason why I really hate alcohol. Yeah.